Hello, and thank you for taking your time to preview the elocutionist of the Truth Convention presentations. I am Donald Pickett, and I'm the producer, and for the next 29 minutes, I'm going to share some of the highlights of the symposium. This was the first Truth Convention with almost 14 hours of information. You're only going to be able to get about 25 minutes here today. I hope you not only enjoy, but learn something also. The presentation is for the purposes of alternate information not shared with the mainstream, yet affects each of us. We all know things are not as they seem. So let's look at some alternate perspectives and provide the facts others might be unaware of so we can understand the larger perspective. Our first presenter is Dr. Stephen Greer of CSETI in the Disclosure Project. Dr. Greer is the tops in the field of extraterrestrial communications. How we've gotten to where we are and where we are and where we're headed. And we're gonna wrap this up there's some images that we'll be showing in about an hour and a half of uh, an extraterrestrial biological life form that visited us about 14 months ago in the center of Joshua Tree National Park. Because really what this is really about is that all of us have to take responsibility for our consciousness and our planet and the future. And we're going to manifest that future together. It isn't going to come out of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. It's going to come from us, and it always has been. And many people want to know, why is this subject filled with so much myth and rumor and secrecy and, frankly, ne negativity? And I tell people they have to keep people diverted from the truth, because once they know it, it's so beautiful, the future that awaits us, that they won't be able to control the masses through the fear and the fear games and the war games that they've been unleashing for the last century. Eisenhower was right when he said, beware the military-industrial complex, and this did not come from Abby Hoffman. This is a five-star general, conservative Republican, who was screwed by this group Majestic in 1956. I'll give you the date. And the Rockefeller Commission reorganized the Department of Defense and the CIA, because after we started making contact in England, where a 100-foot diameter disk hovered 10 feet above the field with us, where it Popo, the volcano outside Mexico City, massive triangular craft, 800 feet in diameter, would materialize and come around and signal to us while we were remote viewing these luminous white beings who were piloting these ships. These people in our government wanted to stop that at all cost. So the primary issue here is people making contact and don't wait for Hillary Clinton to do it for you. A third of them are the hardliners, and they're the murderous hardliners, and they don't mind eating their own. In the mid-90s, there was a former CIA director, Bill Colby, who was getting old, desperately wanted to see this secrecy end, wanted to see these technologies out, wanted to see the people of the world lifted from the economic slavery of the petrodollar and the government, I mean, Goldman Sachs cartels. But the point is, is that this man knew that we were headed for a collision as a civilization if we didn't change course. So Bill Colby, former CIA director, agrees to transfer an operational energy device that pulls energy out of the expansion of space-time. We have them. They're in classified projects. And about $50 million in seed money so we could get it out to the public and get the world off of oil and gas and coal and the electric grid and start a whole new civilization. It's Time. This was an amazing presentation and a highlight with such great details of information. Thank you, Dr. Greer. You can download his entire presentation at thetruthconvention.com, as with all the speakers you are watching here today. As I was editing Dr. Kolb, I had a really hard time determining exactly which clips to include, as all this was such great information. GMOs, chemicals, and the daily products we use. Well, you'll see what I mean. Areas of concern include genetically modified foods, EM radiation and cellular telephones, cosmetics and personal care products, implants, including breast implants, nanotechnology, and radiation and radiation devices. So really now we have a perfect storm. We have an agency that, according to its own internal documents, cannot meet the demands on it to accurately analyze the science then we have the whistleblower saying that frequently 
uh, science and reason take a back seat to money and power, and then you have a legislative precedent that says if an injured device gets on the market and injures you or your member of your family, you have no recourse. You cannot be compensated. So think about it. Now you might understand why it's so important for you to know what you're putting in your body. The precautionary principle states we have an ethical imperative to prevent rather than merely to treat disease, especially in the face of scientific uncertainty. This is especially true with new technologies that have never been out there. Nanotechnology, genetically modified foods, cellular telephones, Wi-Fi, all the things that have never, the public has never been exposed to. In the absence of scientific consensus, the burden of proof falls upon the shoulders of those advocating an action, or in this case, a product or device. Now, allegedly, in the Pentagon, behind a, a, a very high-ranking general's desk, and I think this was referred to in the last lecture as well, is a sign that says, what, what you don't know won't harm you, it will kill you. And, and as we go through this lecture, I think you'll understand that this is very true. Things that you are currently being exposed to can and will kill you, possibly, if you don't know about them and you have especially the right genetics or the right level of exposure. Now, there's probably no other thing that more people are being exposed to world, uh, worldwide and especially in the United States because there's less regulation here than in, in Europe than genetically modified foods. Currently, it's in the corn, soybeans, rice, cottonseed oil, and canola oil, to name a few. See what I mean? Everyone needs this information to help live a chemical-free life. Chemicals are bad. Thank you, Dr. Kolb. This really is great information. Which brings us now to Bob Dean. Bob Dean was a command sergeant major that worked at SHAPE, the Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers in Europe. While there, he had cosmic top secret clearance. His story is not only amazing, it answers questions for many of us. Disclosure is coming, guys. Prepare yourselves. Nonsense. Poppycock. Balderdash. They're not going to do it anytime soon because it's simply that big a story. It cannot be told in little bits and pieces. It, they can't take baby steps about this. Once they start letting the lid up and once they start telling you the truth, as I said, all hell is going to break loose. The world is going to change forever. Nothing will ever be the same. And I will tell you that, that genetic manipulation is still underway. It's still taking place. The human race is in transition. It's in a transcendent transformation to a new species. And a hundred years from now, the, your great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren are going to be living in a world totally, totally different than the world we're living in today. Not only will the world change, but the species will change. Human beings are simply pawns in a game of alien minds that control our every move. They are everywhere, in the sky, on the sea, and all over the world. It is not just an alien intelligence from another planet or another star system, but it is actually from another universe from which from our very beginnings has been controlling all that has happened since. So ladies and gentlemen, literally, we are not alone. We have never been alone. We have had this intimate interrelationship with advanced intelligence from our very beginnings. Our very beginnings began as a result of gen genome manipulation, genetic engineering, well over 100,000 years ago. And as I told you, it's still going on. Humans are changing physically and spiritually. <clears throat> now, the question would arise, who the hell are these people? Are we to be afraid of them? Thank you, Mr. Dean, for everything you've done for mankind and the mission of truth and disclosure. This is an amazing story from such a gentleman. And the ramifications that we have had an intimate interrelationship with extraterrestrial intelligence from the beginning of human history. <laughs> wow, what a statement. You will definitely want to download Bob Dean. Now for even more great info from Eva Herr. 
radio show host and author speaking about the science of consciousness. Sit tight, this is some really good information. We can change physical reality with thought, but energy is subtle when it comes to manipulating the etheric field, and you have to be in an altered state of mind. If you're walking around in your everyday state of mind, what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about that? I can't stand this. I can't stand that. Then your subconscious mind is going to run, and it's going to, over time, build those things that's going to make your life what it is. You are creating today what you're going to live in 10 years. You can see that they've used this. They plant these random event generators all over the world, and they, it, makes, it measures cohesiveness of consciousness wherever it is. And they found when they get a cohesion in consciousness that something is about to happen. In other words, the mass consciousness in that area has gotten very sticky because the mass consciousness are all thinking about somewhat of the same thing, like the World Trade Center when it got bombed. Three days before it happened, the random event generator in that area became non-random. And staying in the moment is the thing to manipulate physical reality. It's the only way you can do it. Imagine that you're in a swing hanging from a very large oak tree, and it's the swing's got a very long rope, and you go way up high, and you come way back low. Those are polarities. They now know that there are more neurons in your gut than there are in your brain. So every time you get that uh, feeling, every time you get that sense of heightened awareness, even if it's as subtle as a butterfly's wing, and it'll be right here, right above your belly button, when you get that feeling, it's neurons firing, and it's sending an impulse to your autonomic nervous system like Morse code. How do you know if you're getting something like diabetes? Do you have swelling of your feet or your calves? Do you have a tinge of redness on your feet? Do you have neuropathies? Do you have tinglings? Do you get a whoosh sometimes after you eat a meal? If you do, if you fatigue, then yet you have something going on with your blood sugar. And blood sugar can do a whole lot of things. How about that? Thank you, Eva, for pointing out these facts that affect each of us daily. Frankly, when I asked Eva and Dr. Cole to be a part of this event, I was not privy to the depth of the topics and was wanting some Atlanta professionals to be included in the event. Well, it exceeded my expectations. And after watching, I felt honored to have this great information included in the conference. This is not filler material in any way. Time for Mr. UFO Stanton Freeman, known amongst the tops in UFOlogy. If they weren't built here, they were built someplace else. Remember, if anybody could build things like flying saucers, the major application would be for military purposes. Every once in a while, we have a war on this planet. We built stealth fighters. They were used in battle. We're still not using any flying saucers. There's a whole big chapter, this is a 965-page book, <clears throat> whole big chapter on government involvement in past investigations. Not one word about Blue Book Special Report 14. Covered more than 20 times as many cases. Did Condon know about it? Yes, I sent him a letter, and my letter was acknowledged as having been received. Four basic rules for UFO debunkers. Don't bother me with the facts. My mind's made up. But the public doesn't know, I'm not going to tell them. If you can't attack the data, attack the people, it's easier. And do your research by proclamation. Investigation is too much trouble and nobody will know the difference anyway. Here's one of the Phoebus systems. The 2B was about 7 feet in diameter. The power level was only 4,400 megawatts, twice the power of Grand Coulee Dam. Successfully tested before 1971. Make a great upper stage if we want to go to Mars. We don't seem to want to. Uh, great increase in payload compared to an all-chemical system. Incidentally, none of the SETI people ever talk about colonization and migration. And they certainly don't talk about flying saucers. There's a simple reason for that. If flying saucers, alien spacecraft, are visiting this planet, then who needs SETI? Ignorance triumphs over facts and data. This bust was done by Marjorie Fish based on Barney Hill's description under hypnosis of what the aliens look like. It's your typical little gray guy, you know, under four foot tall, uh, 
Big eyes, practically no nose, mouth, ears, just little holes. Well, you're a typical little great guy. I don't know what else to call him. Thank you, Stanton, for such a presentation and being a part of the Truth Convention, also with your decades of research. Stanton said to me this was one amongst the strangest mix of speakers he's ever been involved with. <laughs> I laughed and said, it makes sense to me, I must confess. From South Africa is Michael Tellinger speaking about the cradle of civilization and the birthplace of humans. Very quickly, remind us all, you've heard this from many speakers already, we live in an electromagnetic universe where everything spins and vibrates, and that is really the nature of our perceived reality. If it doesn't spin or vibrate, it cannot be part of this reality that we call the electromagnetic universe. From subatomic particles and uh, solar systems and uh, the entire galaxy, everything seems to spin and vibrate, and that gives, that allows it to be present in this perceived reality of ours. Why is three, why is seven and eight so important? These ancient civilizations didn't get together. They didn't have a board meeting and say, well, let's use number seven and eight all the time because it'll confuse the crap out of future generations. Everything is just frequency, including our thoughts, and frequency equals energy. And this is the one thing that <clears throat> we still haven't been able to wrap our heads around. And uh, I'm working with a brilliant guy called Willem de Swart on, on, the, on a, this thing called we, we call Secret Numbers of God. And that's where we actually start really getting to the deep end of things, where frequency equals energy. And as soon as we can figure out how to actually use that information, um, we're going to free ourselves from a lot of this oppression and this enslavement that we find ourselves as a species right now. If they drag the stones for 300 miles, you, your mind would say, well, would any self-respecting architect or builder build drag stones that are cracked or that are faulty? The answer to that is no. They would have carved, you know, brought beautiful, pristine stones with them and not cracked and broken stones. And if you look at this, one of the lintels, look at that beautiful crack through the lintel. Now, no self-respecting builder or architect would put a lintel up there with a crack in it, so we have to assume that the crack emerged after it was put in place. But look at the erosion around that crack. Once again, you got about 10 centimeters of erosion. What is it, about four inches of erosion around that crack. So once again, this tells us this has been standing there for hundreds, if not a million years or more. Thank you, Michael, for coming all the way from South Africa to add so much to the conference. His presentation created a serious buzz. I'm also looking forward to his new research. Now we are grasping on the desk of forbidden knowledge with my friend Eric John Phelps in his topics of the Vatican Assassins discussing the Jesuit order and the dark side of the Vatican. Hold on to your seats for this one. Without the Jesuits, there is no Pope with his universal temporal power. You will find this in the Church of Jesu, the Jesuit Church of Jesu in Rome. And again, this is their byword, their phrase, ad majorium de gloria. The doctrines and deeds and destiny of Satan's greatest secret society behind the Pope of Rome's New World Order. The New World Order is all about the Pope. It's the Pope's New World Order. Okay, it's, we have the introduction now, the Jesuit Order, it's conspiracy for world government. Here we have J. Edgar Hoover, that wonderful Shriner Freemason. Uh, evil, terrible, horrible man. And he was the one that uh, helped orchestrate the Kennedy assassination. What did he say about a conspiracy? The individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous he cannot believe it exists. Charles Chenequi, the great Roman Catholic priest who was saved, he came to know the Lord in the mid-1800s, uh, after the assassination of Lincoln, he exposed the Jesuit order as the killers of Lincoln. What did he have to say about a conspiracy? Rome is in constant conspiracy against the rights and liberties of man all over the world, but she is particularly so in the United States. Ex-priest Jeremiah Crowley, what did he have to say about a conspiracy? I know and assert without fear of successful contradiction that the Vatican system the Roman Catholic hierarchy has a grip upon all the departments of our government, from the president to department of clerks, including legislative, judiciary, and executive departments, 
both federal and state. Aloysius Fortis, the Jesuit general in 1825, what did he say? Let us lay to heart this maxim as the rule of all our efforts, one sole authority, that of Rome, one sole order, that of the Jesuits. You may well know what we aim at is the empire of the world. Intense. This information could surely shed some light on things. Now for the slight noise you might have heard from as a result of this man, Ed Edwards. Ed puts off so much energy he can heal or disrupt as he proved at the truth convention in both fronts. The film director Richard came up to me with a look in his eyes I will never forget. Ed blew up the sound system. No, really? <laughs> I looked at him and said, yeah, fix it. I think Richard got more than he bargained for with Ed. So here's my good friend, Ed Edwards. Grandma was a hands-on healer. And when I came into this world, I was a complication baby or so. So she did this energy on me as a kid. And I, as a child, I was able to mimic it. I was able to reproduce it. And I've played with it all my life. I've always searching out the answers to see what I can do with this energy. Back in 94, I'm just gonna give y'all a roughness here. Back in 94, I was able to hook up with Dr. William C. Levingood. Uh, that's me in 94 at his lab. And what we learned over the years was that it would take pain out of people, promotes very rapid healing, uh, just all kind of neat things. And along the way, I learned how to do some very interesting, well, we won't call them parlor tricks, but they're demonstrations that I do with energy, which I'd like to do on all y'all just right now to get it started so that you get an idea of what this is all about. Be careful, because I'm gonna do a gravity wave thing. Anybody can stand up for me where it's level ground, you might like to try something right here. And if any of you have any aches and pains, arthritis, bursitis, things like that. And I see a few hands out there. Just play with this energy. The demonstration that I'm going to do is one of the side effects of it, it heals or makes you feel better. That's called charge density plasma. That's what mm, Dr. Livingood there calls it. Anyhow, y'all should be feeling it by now. Quite warm. It's very strong. And since we've got a bunch of people in here, it'll crank it up. Just get used to it and aware of it. Don't try to figure it out or anything. Just let it come in. Let's we'll see if we can't make your pain go away for you right quick. Sit down right there. This is what I like. I can work on more than one at once. He certainly lit that crowd up. People are still talking about having his energy pushing them down. Thank you, Ed, for shocking everyone, literally. So now, Ken Thomas, the publisher of Steam Shovel Press, will be providing some great details on JFK, Roswell incident, parapolitics, and the other historical facts that are overlooked and are unknown. But for some reason, Ray Palmer forgot all that when he hired this man to investigate Crisman and Dahl's claims about the Maury Island UFO. Most people should recognize Kenneth Arnold here, whose sighting three days after Maury Island began the post-World War II wave of UFO sightings. But in a period where the East Oregonian newspaper alone reported 17 UFO sightings immediately after Kenneth Arnold's, some things were recovered. One such thing was this 30-inch saucer discovered by a housewife that month and turned over to the FBI's special agent in charge of that region. It was given to this man, Guy Bannister, the special agent in charge of the FBI in the Pacific Northwest. By 1963, he was working with anti-Castro Cubans in New Orleans and running another counter-espionage operation, uh, the propaganda arm of which was called the Fair Play for Cuba Committee. His chief employee then was Lee Harvey Oswald, the supposed assassin of JFK. Rolls over and over again for you to look at. The limousine emerges from the Stemmons Freeway sign. Immediately after the Stemmons Freeway sign, there's a man with an umbrella. He's known as the Umbrella Man. Next to him is a man with a radio control device who's going boom, boom, boom. He's pointing, he's coordinating the shots. This is all very clear in the movie. The Altex building, book depository, and the grassy knoll. I don't know where it's at now, but it'll, you can go back and watch it again. And you will see, and everybody sees this, and it's common sense, it's in the Oliver Stone movie, um, 
The shot is coming from the grassy knoll, and it's knocking Kennedy back this way. Grassy knoll, Kennedy goes back that way. And again, there's, an, there's a guy with an umbrella. Fletcher probably believed that the umbrella might have shot um, Karari a dart poison into Kennedy's throat because you do see Kennedy paralyzed in this position as he emerges. Other people believe that it was a signaling device just like the man standing next to him doing his hand signals. There are photographs from the other side that show both the umbrella man and the radio controller man sitting down on the curb just as everybody else is running up to the grassy knoll to chase the shooter, to chase the assassin. These guys sit down, eventually they get up and leisurely walk in the opposite direction. Thank you, Ken, for being a trooper and not letting a major illness recovery keep yourself from making it to the Truth Convention. Well, we're going to conclude with more great information to download, which leads us to David Wilcock, who provided the continual information about 2012 and beyond. Thank you, David, for this outstanding presentation. Always see the same characters in every ancient culture. These are Sumer This is the Sumerian goddess Inanna, and I specifically want you to notice her face here and the fact that it is, in fact, human. Okay, so Sumerians, Babylonians, there's their gods and they're human looking. Now, of course, look at these guys down here. Notice the height, and look at this guy over here. Well, this is your Anunnaki. Now, People are like, ooh, reptilian Anunnaki. Well, if you actually look at the Sumerian gods, even if they are somewhat more reptilian than we are, they are still predominantly human looking. And also, I want you to pay attention to the fact that he is associated with building this structure out of multi-ton blocks. And those blocks are so heavy that we still would have strained our technology to the limit to try to build something like the Osirian which as you see here, is made of these incredibly massive blocks. We still don't know how it was done. So not only does he have a different skin color, but then as we start looking at other Egyptian gods and their offspring, because of course gods mate with humans and form demigods, or what are also called heroes. But look at the shape of the head here. Akhenaten, you really kind of see it more on this one, the same kind of strange elongated skull. But you really see it on Akhenaten's wife, Nefertiti. Now this is... First example, she's just wearing a hat here, but you notice it appears there's just a much larger skull that that hat is wrapped around than what we normally would consider human. So here's another example of three Hindu gods, Rama, Vishnu, and Shiva, all on their lily pads, their lotuses that are flying through the air. And of course, if you go through the Hindu tradition, they talk about Vimana. The Vimana are flying craft that don't make any noise, they have advanced weaponry, they can fly right through the side of a mountain. In every way, they are UFOs. This appears to be what is happening to human beings that are seated on planets all over the galaxy. I showed you archaeological evidence that humans are in all these ancient cultures as the gods. I showed you skulls of humans that were analyzed and they have con conditions of bone that's like enamel. The gods are real, and they built these pyramids, and the pyramids are a technology that's much more advanced than anything we have now. It harnesses energy coming up out of the earth. It can open up stargates that actually pop you through space and time. That appears to be why these pyramids were built where they were. They also harness the energy of life and vitality. The Russian pyramid experiments in modern times cured cancer, removed all these conditions of poisons in toxic chemicals. And now what we're seeing is Galactic energy apparently is responsible for these cycles of evolution, 26 million year cycle, and now the 62 million year, which could be the galaxy divide up in 10 pieces for the more recent one, and the galaxy divide up into four equal pieces for the older one, similar to astrology, but on a galactic scale. I want to thank you for taking the time to review the presentation of the speakers of the Truth Convention. The alternate information provided is 14 hours covering 10 speakers over multiple topics very valuable information in this day and age we're living in. You can find each individual speaker download available at thetruthconvention.com and hopefully we'll see you at the next TruthCon.